कंप्लीट नेक्टर हरे कृष्णा ओके कर्म संन्यास योगा दिस इज एक्शन इन Krishna consciousness. Whatever action you do, you have to do it in Krishna consciousness. So, connection between chapter four and five will revise once. Chapter two was he gave the uh, knowledge about soul and uh, you know its entanglement with the body, and then buddhi yoga is the process how to get out of this entanglement, right? Then chapter three was what? What was the chapter three about? It was explaining that a person who is on this platform of knowledge no longer has any duties to perform. Then in chapter four, he is, you know, telling all kinds of uh, sacrificial work. It culminates, ends in knowledge. Everything ends in knowledge. You need to have jnana yoga. Then uh, Lord also glorifies uh, jnana, that is the knowledge, and he says that you have to do action in an inaction, 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 and that action, uh, karma, vikarma, karma, and all that he is uh, telling about uh, in chapter four, and he is also glorifying. Knowledge, renunciation. So, um, in a last shloka of uh, last chapter, he said, "Okay, fine, Arjuna. Now you should get up and fight. Okay. So now, uh, what is Arjuna understanding till now? He says, "Okay, Lord. Lord is saying renunciation. So renunciation in knowledge. You should renunciate in knowledge. Means what? I should stop. I will not do any kind of work. It means stop all the work performed as." Sense it is a sense action, so I should not use anything and I should not work anymore. That's what he's understanding. But if one performs work in devotional service as Krishna is suggesting, then how is work stop? I'm still working, right? He's thinking like that. This is Arjuna's thinking. So work and renunciation. Krishna on one side says renunciation, thordo, and then it says work in Krishna consciousness. It is not compatible, says Arjuna, and at that this point of time, this point of time, Arjuna is not very clear. So, understanding what actually, the, what Arjuna is uh, lacking in understanding for us, he you know he is a knowledgeable person. He is lacking that work in full knowledge. The moment you get full jnana and you are working after getting that jnana, that becomes non-reactive, and is therefore as same as inaction, because. A karma means what? You are not doing anything for yourself. You are, it's oh, completely spiritual. You are doing everything in Krishna consciousness. So now chapter 5, it opens with Arjuna's question. Same as, you know, chapter 3 we did. Chapter 3 was what? Karma yoga. This is karma sannyasa yoga. So he is asking similar kind of a question. It opens with similar question. Which is better, Krishna? Work Should I work in devotion or renunciation of work? Just leave all the work. What is better? So this is how the, the chapter is going to open, which is better, right? So Krishna is going to answer Arjuna's uh, question by saying that we should be like, uh, uh, he compared it to a lotus leaf. And then he is also going to explain to us how we can get uh, liberation from all this. Uh, it, it is in little greater uh, detail than third chapter. So this is what uh, Lord Krishna is going to explain to us in this chapter. Also, he is going to elaborate a little bit more that about Nishkarm Karma Yoga and uh, how to get liberation by focusing on the Lord equal vision and what is the peace formula. This is what we are going to learn in this chapter. What is the name of chapter 5? Karma Sanyasa Yoga. Karma Sanyasa Yoga. Correct. Okay. Please raise your hands uh, as usual and you will uh, get to translate it. Um, Arjuna Uvacha Sanya Samkarmanam Krishna Unar Yogam Cha Shamsasi Yachreya Etayo Rekam Tanme Bruhi Sunishchitam Yes, please. Ashwari Mata Hare Krishna. Arjuna said, Oh Krishna, first of all you asked me to renounce work and then again you recommended work with devotion. Now, will you kindly tell me definitely which one of the two is more beneficial? Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Arjuna is confused in the beginning of chapter 5 only. <laughs> he is confused. He said, may, may war karum, na karum. What is it? What are you trying to tell me? I must fight this battle or should I just renounce and go? <laughs> so, what is uh, Krishna saying here in chapter 5? He is saying that work in devotional service is better than mental speculation whatever you are thinking it is better right so he is saying that devotional service is easier also why is it easy 
because it is spiritual in, in nature. It is transcendental in nature, completely spiritual, right? It is free. It makes you free. Uh, there is no reaction as such for you because you're not doing anything for a, a, anything. You're just doing everything for Krishna. So let's see what uh, how Lord Krishna is going to uh, reply. Um, Uh, did I do this? This uh, slide? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Juma Mataji, Hare Krishna. The personality of God had replied, the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation. But of the two, work in devotional service is better than renunciation of work. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah, Arjuna was confused, right? So what is Krishna telling? Devotional service is better. Since everything belongs to Krishna and nothing is ours as such, right? Everything belongs to Krishna. Nothing is our own to renounce. Everything is Krishna's. So whatever we have as such should be used for Krishna, right? It is. It should be used in Krishna's service. If nothing is mine, how can I even say, you know, if I'm living in a in a uh, uh, in a uh, in an apartment and I'm paying the rent, it is not even mine. It's the owner's, right? So I, I just have to vacate whenever he tells me to vacate. And then I'm, I don't own anything over there. I don't own that house. Similarly, this house body also we don't own. Nothing is ours. So the person who understands, who gets this knowledge, whatever we have, we should be using in Krishna's service. A person who is working in such kind of consciousness is completely renounced. So that process is called Karma Yoga. And what does? Uh, how does it help us? It will help us um, escape the result of any kind of fruitive action. So that, that action will not be ours. That entanglement, you know, we have in the cycle of birth and death, that will not be there anymore, right? So we can learn a lot from what uh, a little mistake like uh, Raja or King Riga did. We can learn a lot from that. There was a, a king uh, called uh, Lord Krishna, you know, he released uh, King Riga, you can see in the picture, from a curse. And uh, he told, what is the danger, you know, uh, from taking Brahmin's, uh, Brahmana's property. One day, you know, Krishna's friends were playing. Samba and other, other young uh, uh, Gopas were all playing uh, of Yadu dynasty. They were, they were playing around and then suddenly, you know, they were very thirsty. They saw a well over there. They said, okay, let me just uh, take some, drink some water. As they peeped into the well, they saw a huge, amazing creature, a huge lizard resembling like a hill that big so he said, oh my god that poor thing is lying over there inside the creature god knows for how long let's try to save it and pull it out they tried but of course they were small boys and it was not possible they brought their ropes everything they tried it was not happening so who do they approach always as usual they ran towards krishna hey krishna come on see what happened look into the well so krishna came he looked and what did he do Bernbul just extended his left hand. That's it. By the touch of Lord Krishna's hand, the creature immediately transformed into a devata. And then Lord Krishna said, Hey, who are you? What are you doing over here? Why are you in this form? So that uh, divine uh, form replied. He said, You know what, Krishna, my name is King Riga, and I am the son of Ishwaku. Ishwaku is the forefather of Lord Ram. And, you know, I was very, very uh, famous in my kingdom for giving charity. So what I, I have given many, many cows. I gave so many cows to so many brahmanas. But this once it so happened that uh, I gave uh, a cow belonging to another brahmana by mistake. I didn't even know it. That cow wandered somehow into my herd. And I didn't know that that cow came from another brahmana's house and it has come into my cows. He never used to give one cow or two cow. It's like thousands and millions of cows he would give for charity. So it it as when he gave charity to this another Brahmana, that cow also went with him. Now the other cow, he was looking around, right? He was looking for his cow. When he came to understand that king has already given that uh, that uh, and in charity, he didn't know that king has given. He went to that Brahmana. How did you take my cow? You cannot take my cow away like that. First Brahmana claimed the cow was his. Second Brahmana said, no, sorry, it was given to me in charity. It is mine now. They started quarreling, both the Brahmanas, and then they said, no, okay, we will go to the king. 
so they approached me king ringa is relating the story so he says they they came to me and they said and uh, they wanted to talk to me and uh, they said uh, i said okay sorry very very sorry i will give you 100000 cows in return to that one cow please just forget about it they said no you cannot do that you have whatever offense you have committed unknowingly knowingly whatever it is it's not happening i don't want that matter cannot be it didn't get settled as such so then slowly shortly after some time he died king riga died so he was taken by yamdotas to the court of yamraja so yamra said oh, hey what happened you did something wrong right so what do you want now do you want to suffer the results of the sin or do you want to enjoy whatever pious acts you have been doing all your life you have done lot of charity so what do you want to take up first he said let me just finish off whatever little sin i had done so he assumed the body of the lizard then so after king riga told the story he offered uh, of course he went in a nice uh, celestial airplane came to take him which transported him into heaven and uh, lord krishna told you know uh, if the danger of uh, taking away brahmana's property by mistake also this was just a small mistake it was nothing big also so you can see what can happen <laughs> what kind of karmas we do <laughs> okay uh, yes sonali mata ji hari krishna uh, hari krishna hari krishna one who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renowned such a person liberated from all dualities easily overcome material bondage and is completely liberated oh my mighty armed arjuna renounce results not action not action <laughs> so you know one who is in complete krishna consciousness he is always a renouncer only why he has no hatred no uh, desire nothing he i have done my action whatever happens happens krishna it's yours good bad whatever so he knows fully well he is the ultimate he is the supreme personality of godhead i am just a part and parcel of krishna nothing is mine that i am owning so that you know some people say oh uh, i can become one with the lord that is not right why that point is not right because there is no duality uh, in that you, you cannot become one right there is no duality in his mind that uh, whatever he does he does for krishna we cannot be equal to krishna quality wise we can be like krishna but quantity wise he is supreme personality of godhead that's it right so once we are freed from this platform of dualities then you are liberated there is no pleasure no pain nothing so liberated soul if he is free he is not interested in anything that is temporary so one such person was we will see the story of now haridas thakur who was haridas thakur let's see he was also a great saint vaishnava saint he he was the initial pers person who propagated the name of uh, mahamantra hari krishna movement you know he left his home so haridas thakur where did he, where did he stay he stayed in the forest and he would chant the holy name of krishna uh, some uh, three lakh times he used he was called namacharya by chaitanya mahaprabhu and he would put in uh, put a tulsi plant in front of him he would sit there and chant and day night all throughout he would chant so uh, for he has to survive right so he would go around begging in the village and he whatever little food he would get he would just eat like that and that's it that's how and he was really respected people used to worship him in the neighboring uh, villages because he was very saintly but the ruler of the district he envied he was envious he was not able to tolerate that other people are giving respect to haridas thakur so he started plotting something kya kare to you know he should be dishonored somehow he should not get this kind of honor from other people so what should i do the the best thing is i if i can find some fault in his character people will disrespect him so what did he do he called all the local prostitutes in that in his area he said come here there is a devotee named haridas thakur he is doing japa in the forest go distract him and if you can do that if you can bring down his character if you can devise a way you deviate him from whatever religious vows he is taking so out of all those pro prostitutes there was a one very beautiful very attractive young girl she said i take up this challenge she promised okay i i will attract him 
and within three days you see i will do it it's very good i will send a constable with you and when they, you are caught in that uh, compromising position we, you can we will bring both of you and then he will be charged and he will be called character yet and we will arrest him so that is how he wanted to dishonor him he said wait 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 do one thing let me just go first if i am able to do it next day i'll come and i will let you know and then you get the constable to arrest him she said okay so she went that night she dressed very attractively very nicely and went and she bowed down offered her prayers to him and she offered her prayers to tulsi plant also and offered her obeisances to hari thakur and she exposed little bit of herself and she sat down over there and she started saying oh you are so charming you are such a great devotee you are such a great preacher you are so you are really in your youth you know uh, who can uh, you know um, control her mind on seeing you i won't be if i am not going to be with you i think i'll just die i can't stay without you so haridas thakur was very cool he said okay sure i'll accept you no problem okay but one condition you have to wait you know because i'm chanting hari krishna maha mantra you know on my beads so you have to sit over here listen to the chanting of the holy name and as soon as i'm finished no problem i will fulfill your desire so prostitute was very happy she said okay let me just sit over there he come continuously chanted till morning he used to chant so many numbers of uh, rounds so he kept on chanting till morning so it was morning time so she just stood up and said okay fine so and then she went to the district ruler she said okay i couldn't do it but today he has promised that he is going to enjoy his time with me so let's see so the next evening again she went over there again she did, he did the same thing he said last night i know you were very disappointed i understand please excuse me okay because i i want to be with you but problem is you know i have to finish this chanting of hari krishna my, my regular chanting numbers are there i have to do it right okay once i am finished again the same procedure she sat down over there he was chanting and oh my lord hari oh my lord hari kept on saying and night came the prostitute was still there restless very restless and when haridas thakur saw that he says see please excuse me but i have made a vow you know i have, I have promised to chant one um, 10 million i think yeah 10 million uh, names of krishna this month so this whole month i have to do that i have to promise right so this month is coming to an uh, to the end so i have to completely do it i have if i won't do then my vow will be broken please i tried yesterday also to chant hari krishna all night but still i could not complete right so please tomorrow i think i will be able to complete my vow or my vow will be fulfilled so then it will be definitely possible for me to be able to be with you and in your company But do you think haridas thakur really wanted that no actually haridas thakur he knew he didn't want to enjoy with the prostitute he simply tricked her to you know these great devotees what do they do sadhu purush they just want to you know deliver all of us so they were uh, he was giving her a chance to hear the holy name of the lord because he knew what who she was and pure devotees they chant hari krishna maha mantra when pure devotees chant they can purify anybody right they are they are already in a purified transcendental state so any other who is in a sinful uh, activity they can also get uh, purified because of such purified devotees so next night again she went over there she stayed the whole night then after uh, sitting over there as she was hearing slowly what happened inside the the heart it started melting and she also personally she was chanting and she became purified from inside also so he said i think today it will be possible for me to finish the vow you see then i will definitely be with you morning came he was still chanting and but here there is a difference because of his association for these many days her, she changed her mind like you know her mind had purified so she fell at his lotus feet and she said i'm very very sorry you know i came to do this this is because uh, that district ruler he polluted my mind and i came to do this to you you are such a great devotee and uh, i have i'm a, a profession i am a prostitute by profession so i have i don't know how many limitless uh, sinful activities i must have done please forgive me and be merciful upon me i'm just a fallen soul so haridas thakur said don't worry i know everything about what what the conspiracy is going on 
he is just an ignorant fool don't worry so his activities don't make me unhappy at all you know i would have actually left the place immediately the moment i came to know all this i would have actually gone from this place but because you came here you stayed here so i wanted to deliver you i wanted to take care of you that you also become purified so she said please be my spiritual master be my guru instruct me what to do how to do what to do that i can become free from all this material pollution that i am said go home immediately whatever little property you have just give it to brahmanas distribute everything to everyone come back to this cottage there is a tulsi plant over here sit here meditate stay in krishna consciousness over here chant hari krishna maha mantra continuously serve the tulsi plant over there and offer prayers to tulsi mata and then in slowly you will achieve the shelter of lord krishna after giving all these instructions he left that place and she continuously uh, chanted she did whatever he spiritual master said she distributed everything she stayed over there she shaved her head also clean stayed within that cottage and um, she was wearing just one cloth she didn't bother to bring anything much with her she was following a spiritual master's uh, footsteps chanting maha mantra and she became a very famous devotee and she advanced in her spiritual life and he changed the character of that professional prostitute you can imagine haridas thakur people really really not only worshiped him they prayed and they also appreciated the fact that you know um, uh, he could do that to a professional prostitute and change her uh, character and mind so they really glorified him and offered obeisances to haridas thakur that was the story of haridas thakur who was such a purified soul he said like hari haraya nama krishna yadavaya nama yadavaya madavaya keshavaya nama he was born uh, brought up in a muslim family actually and he, he used to chant so many names you know 3 lakh names approximately like i don't know maybe 180 rounds or something mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu used to call him namacharya because he used to do lord's nama all the time <laughs> so uh, haridas thakur he followed uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu's instructions in shishtashtakam uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu has said rinadapi sunichena tarorapi sahishnu namani na manadena kirtaniya sada hari so he was he actually followed that rinadapi sunichena means we should think ourselves lower than even a blade of grass you know he thought himself lower than any other vaishnavas always respecting others always being humble when you put your feet on a blade of grass it bends he used to be like that taro rapi sahishnu na taro rapi sa is tolerant like a tree just like a tree you know we have to be tolerant tree gives us shade it is standing there sun rain water whatever storm it the tree is still there tolerant and also gives us uh, um, shade haridas thakur he was beaten in 22 market places but he said lord please forgive the these people for they do not know what they are doing actually amanina manadena amanina manadena means he is not expecting any respect from anybody but giving respect forget about others giving respect we should give respect he always used to wait outside when mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu was having taking his prasadam he never tried to enter or do anything always in a respectful bowing manner with complete humility kirtaniya sada hari means always chanting the name of lord so haridas thakur chanted day and night you know he used to sleep for hardly one one and a half hours and once durga devi also came the maya devi durga devi she came to test haridas thakur and he, she was really impressed uh, from him with him so this is what it is you know hari hara ya nama krishna yadavaya nama yadavaya madavaya keshavaya nama this is what he was and uh, do we have these qualities being humble humble humility tolerant giving respect to others and not expecting res- uh, in return always chanting the name of uh, lord it's like you know we are always arrogant proud egoistic always want credit for everything get we get angry for every small things you know always say why he has not given me credit and sometimes we are chanting or gossiping but he was a liberated soul he was like a um uh, lotus leaf untouched by water look at the lotus leaf over here when you see the lotus leaf here uh, analogy has been given by taking the example of a lotus leaf you know 
when the water is on the lotus leaf, it doesn't touch it. It, it falls down, right? It's like waterproof. So activities that is done in Krishna consciousness, it is beyond contamination. Yes, please, uh, Juma Mataji, Hare Krishna. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme God is not affected by sinful action as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So activities, whatever is done in Krishna consciousness is beyond contamination. No sinful reaction can touch it. Right? Exactly like lotus leaf. Even though it is in the water, it is not wet. So the leaf of lotus leaf flower, although it is in water, it has no connection with water. Not a drop of water will stay over there. Similarly, any, uh, any miseries that come in our life, any problems that come in our life, any disturbances that come in our life in this material world. But if we are completely in Krishna consciousness, we are not, un we are not touched by those disturbances. We are not bothered by those disturbances. We are not bothered by the miseries of this material world. These will come, this will go. So like when, when even when recently COVID happened, right? What happened in the city? We were all taking the vaccines. Similarly, when uh, if we are into Krishna consciousness, we are always chanting the name of Krishna. Then what is that happening? That it is like a vaccine. It is protecting us. It is nicely protecting protecting us from all the contamination, all the pollution of this world. Krishna consciousness is also like a vaccine for us. So how can we become like a lotus leaf? Is what we need to understand. So we have to do our duty, right? So. Be detached from the results. Control the senses. So these are the three steps we have to follow to be like a lotus leaf. So what is the duty? Duty is what? A, B, C, D. Association of devotees. Never leave them. B, Bhagavad Gita. Read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam and other uh, scriptures. C, chanting. And D, Krishna Prasadam. That should be the diet, right? So... You can see that in picture number one, uh, what is that trying to do in association of devotees? You are doing aarti and all that. And picture number two, you are reading Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. Picture number three, you can see chanting. And four is prashatam. So the thing is, you know, if spiritual life, if we are in spiritual life, what happens is the sinful life will automatically will be gone because you can't have spiritual life and sin sinful life together. You cannot have that. If spiritual life you are entering, sinful life will disappear automatically, right? So we should never, we should always try to be detached from the results. If we are detached from the result, then we have nothing to worry. Nothing is ours to be worried, right? So we should never ever forget God as he is the, he is the cause. We should never think that uh, God is the cause of our suffering. He is not because we are the doing karma and then blame God about it, right? We, when we forget Lord, that's when we suffer. <laughs> we, we forget the Lord and then we start having suffering and then we say, God, you only did it. Aapne kiya ye. So the person who is seeing, you know, that ye isme fayda, isme nuksan hai, there is profit, there is loss, you will never have that mental peace. So everything in life, you cannot see this is profitable, this is loss, this is profit, this is loss. You can't do all that. Then you won't have mental peace at all, right? What is the cause of sufferings of humanity? When do we suffer? When we? All of the above. All of the above. Uh, yeah, all of the above. And above this me. is because we forget, forget the Lord. The of Lord. Yes, correct. When we forget the Lord, that's when we suffer actually. We should not forget the Lord at all. So control the senses, third one. So third one is how do we control the, just see the picture. We are what, this is our, this is our story, you know. We are running after wealth, money, things, material prosperity. And by the time we are holding all the wealth in our hands, bye-bye, it's time to go. <laughs> so we have to follow these pillars of dharma. So in, in austerity, or you can say it was in Satya Yuga because they did a lot of austerities like meditation and all that. That was possible in Satya Yuga. Cleanliness. Cleanliness uh, in, in, was required for doing yajnas. That was uh, the Yuga Dharma of Treta Yuga. They used to do a lot of yajnas. 
because if you don't have that cleanliness and all you make you cannot make any kind of mistake while doing yagya so that was done properly in uh, that yuga then kindness kindness was for dwapar yuga because they used to go to uh, temple they would give lot of charity and do all that now truthfulness is yuga dharma of kali yuga they say at least be honest to all if not at least to be your own self you know you we need to introspect inside and see am i being truthful so how to strengthen that quality by chanting of maha mantra because if we keep chanting the maha mantra it will improve it will improve it will purify our mind and we will be at least be honest enough for everything of acceptance at least unsatiated material desire is the cause of producing the anger within us is it true or false true correct okay so uh, we move on to the next one um vinda mata ji hare krishna hare krishna when the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions he resides happily in the city of nine gates the material body neither working nor causing work to be done in this shila prabhupada has nicely explained this one this sarva karmani manasa sanyasya aste sukham vashi navadware pure dehe naiva kurvan nakarayan this is we this soul you know this is called embodied because it is inside the body it is jaise jail mein hote na to hamara ye cage jo hai ye body hai so embodied soul soul is living in this embodied Embodied means a body which is like a cage. So it is living in the city of nine gates. The soul, you know, it forgets that it is of superior nature. So what happens? These are the body. These are the nine gates. We'll I'll tell you more in detail about this. So what happens actually is when the soul forgets that it is of higher quality, higher nature, superior nature, and it is identifying with this body, material body, it starts suffering. So. if we go into krishna consciousness we can come out of this we can come out of this prison we can come out of this entanglement so the city of nine gates are as i i was showing you this are the city of nine gates two ears two nostrils two ears two nostrils two eyes one mouth the vagina or penis and anus at the back so this is the Uh, city of nine gates these are the places you know with which we need to be very careful about so what is the purpose of the city the the king of the city is the consciousness queen is the intelligence <laughs> the the consciousness and intelligence both are married together in this body <laughs> this is the city of nine gates we have all these nine gates so the purpose of the city is it the facility to enjoy this is what we are here for that's what we have to question ourselves right so why do we keep changing we are constantly running after happiness you can see this is the modern life we are working we are going home again working again doing something on and then we see this is what we are doing the whole whole time but is this what we are thinking of because what do we get in the whole process happiness is short lived so we get sorrow and temporary happiness even if we get happiness it's very temporary so how do we attain this body because of our previous wants wishes desires that's how we take up another body and whatever past karmas we have done if we deserve a body of a dog or a hog or a camel or a donkey we get that body we get the body that we deserve we can become a devata also we can become a an animal or a tree or a human being whatever according to our karmas so that is what we have to understand that there are three doers who are the three doers one this is the body the city of nine gates second is the soul and the third one is super soul so the body what is the nature of the city nine gates right it grows and it, it come the, the body grows right and it runs without control our control it it is growing that's it you can't say okay stop can stop growing it won't <laughs> body won't listen to you it grows that's the nature it will grow soul the jivatma it is desiring happiness so we get uh, the sinful or the pious reaction as we desire 
whatever we are desire we are getting into that kind of maya illusion that i am this body that is the issue <laughs> the moment we do that we are running after happiness desires and all that so you know whenever you have something going wrong in your life and there is some kind of inequality happening in your life it is because of our own choice nobody else we should not and never should blame anyone for not being uh, happy you know it's nobody is to be blamed why am i not happy because of him because of no nothing no, no because of anybody that we have to understand because the whole law of nature the material nature it's very strict very tough you know it will not have any kind of sympathy it is completely impartial like i told you about the rain whether it's falling on the rock it's falling on the ocean or wherever it, it even if it is falling in the gutter also the rain is impartial it will fall it's how you receive it so it is impartial you get what you deserve right for example a small baby there is a yagya going on or there is a some prayer at home going on and you have there is a fire over there and baby goes and puts her finger will the material nature of fire say oh small baby she so innocent she will she doesn't even know let me not burn her no it won't happen just because she is innocent it will not leave you have put your hand in the fire you will be burned that's it that's what material nature it's it's impartial whatever you do you will have to receive that as you sow so shall you reap next is super soul the paramatma he is there with us he gives us whatever we need for the body he is a facilitator you know basic ingredients whatever is needed to the body it will give it's the source of spirit soul so body soul super soul these are the three doers so what is the take away bhagwan lord krishna supreme personality of godhead lord is to be is completely blameless he is just a facilitator we should not uh, say that oh god why are you mere sath hi aisa kyun why did you do this to me that to me right <laughs> the results of it, everything whatever we are doing is the result of our own choice nothing like that so we have to understand that what are what are the three doers in all the activity body and soul correct विद्या विनय संपन्ने ब्राह्मणे कवि हस्तिनी शुनिच वश्वपा के पंडिता समदर्शिन ऐश्वर्य माता जी अगेन दिस सैकल विल गो ऑन हरे कृष्ण Hare Krishna. The humble sage, by virtue of true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and a gentle Brahman, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater outcast. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So why uh, Pandita Samadarshina? Why they see everyone equal? What is the answer? Because they see creation of God in everyone. They see every supreme soul in everyone. They see they have that knowledge now. For Pandita Samadarshina means that knowledgeable people they understand the learned people they know. Paramatma is residing in everyone. He can see that you know he has got that true knowledge and he is completely humble. Vidya Vinaya Sampanne. That is why they say the more you get the knowledge, the humbler you should be. Why do they say in in our olden times also they say Vidya Vinaya Sampanne? They would say the more knowledge you get, the humbler you become. So the the true knowledge once somebody gets, he becomes completely uh, humble. So Lord says over here, Vidya Vinaya Sampanne, Brahmane ka vi hasti ni shuni cha evashva pa ke cha pandita samadarshina ha. This is a very very important uh, shloka of bhagavad gita because once somebody goes to that spiritual transcendental position he is able to see lord in everyone he is gentle he is very cultured he is very humble that kind of intelligent person he will not discriminate oh um shuni chai brahmane gavi hastini even if he sees a cow gavi means cow hastini elephant shuni chai shuni means dog Shuni chai vashwa paake. Shwa paake means dog eater. Whoever it might be, he is able to see uh, uh, Paramatma in everyone because he has reached that position. He got that knowledge. He understands now that you know they are li all living entities. There is a different dress they are wearing. Yeah, they are wearing a different colored dress now. 
He is into a dress of a cow, dress of a, an elephant, dress of a chandala, dress of a dog. But Paramatma is residing in all of them. You can see in the picture. Everywhere, even if it's an elephant also, Paramatma is with him. Right? Lord Krishna, what did he say? Sarvasya chaha omridi sarni vishto. He says in 15th chapter, I am seated in everyone's heart. Krishna says that. And he also says, Ishwara sarva bhutanam vidyeshe arjuna teshthati. I am situated in everyone's heart, Arjuna. He says in 18th chapter. So the moment somebody understands this, he will know. He will completely become a humble sage. How humble sage sees all with equal vision. Because true knowledge and humility. Because they have true knowledge and humility. Knowledge and humility. Very good. Very nice. Correct answer. Yes. Ye his puns per some spashaja bogaha dukayona evate adyan tavanta kampeya nate shura mate budaha. So any mataji Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Yeah. What does an intelligent person do? A yogi, a true yogi. He is not attract, attracted, okay, sense pleasures, oh, cinema, oh, this, oh, that, parties, kitty parties, gambling, intoxication. He is not worried about all that. He knows, you know, all these are the causes of continuous material existence. If I, if I go into all that, I will continue in this cycle of birth and death. He knows that. So the more we are addicted to these material pleasures, more we are getting trapped into these material miseries. So we have to stay away from all this. What is this? These material sense pleasures, all these are temporary. You are happy only today. Tomorrow somebody will say something, you are sad. Body itself is temporary. Body is permanent. Body is going. So naturally all around the body is also temporary. Nothing is permanent. So the one who is completely liberated and a humble sage, he is not interested in anything that is temporary. So, right? What will material nature Maya says? Come on. You can enjoy me. Come on. But as soon as we go near the Maya, we get trapped in it. So, that's, uh, we can see the examples of what happens when we, you know, cannot control our senses. Like, for example, you see this fish. The, the fisherman, the, the one who is hunting the fish, he, what fisherman will put the tackle in it and invite the push. He'll put something food to eat. So as soon as the fish will go and get attracted to that, it gets entangled. Fish is losing his life by eating. So what is that sense organ? What is that sense organ? What is organ? that sense organ? Tang. Tang. Yeah. 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 Right? right? And then you have deer. Well, deer, she's, it, it loves, it loves the flute music. So what will hunter do? He will play a nice flute. So hunter gets attracted and immediately starts running towards that, uh, you know, that flute sound. And what does the hunter do? He keeps a trap and it's lost its life. So what is the sense organ over here that it has Ear. used? Ear. Hearing. Yes. Very nice. So the deer is hearing and it has lost its life. The male elephant. The male elephant is caught by sexual attraction. What do the hunters do? They put the she elephant in front and it is trained very nicely. So the moment it starts moving, the male elephant is following it. And slowly, slowly, what, what he will do, the, the, suddenly he will push the female elephant uh, uh, aside and there is a pit over there. The male elephant falls into this big pit and it is shackled and taken away. It's gone. Sexual attraction. Next is this bumblebee. Bumblebee. It smells lotus flower. Mm, very nice smell. And it gets trapped and loses its life. And then you have moth. These moths, they are, you know, they need, they love that um, light, the warmth of the light. That's like fire for them. You know, the moment they go near that uh, heat, they lose their life. But they still want to go. They would like the warmth and they want, they're enticed by the fire. But actually it is their death they are calling upon. Right? So it is something that, you know, we, we cannot, this is when we, we cannot control our senses. So this is, this is what it is going to happen. 
these examples we are giving from the animal kingdom whose one sense is very very active but in in our case human beings all the senses are very active right so we are like you know uh, i keep giving this example that uh, it's like a man who has got five wives and he has he has entered the house and all the wives are really capturing him trying to come to my room come to my room come to my room and one has taken his one hand and the other one has taken another hand one has taken one leg is like you know, he is like this where shall i go what is my position so body this body means senses my eyes want beautiful girl wow let us see then nice music okay let me hear let me have that oh very good restaurant my my tongue dictates let's go and eat something non veg something bad something spicy eyes it is dragging to one place ear is dragging to another place tongue is dripping over you over here and dragging somewhere so it our position is like also different wives dragging to different rooms right so we are completely in a very confusion state so instead of controlling our senses we are becoming servant of our senses and then whatever little opportunity we have got as a human human life is very rare we have got this human life we are losing that opportunity by doing that so the only way we have to use is or get out of this whole thing is by being in at the feet of krishna now uh, uh, you've got the answer i guess how does a krishna conscious person lose his taste for material sense pleasure by avoiding instruction of spiritual master okay do you think so all of them how does a krishna conscious person lose his taste for material sense pleasure lose oh all of the above by engaging in love yeah you have to be engaged in you cannot avoid instruction of spiritual master why how can you avoid you have to follow the instruction of spiritual master if you want to you lose the taste of material sense pleasure you cannot uh, by avoiding pleasure activities no by engaging in the loving service of the lord you have to listen to what spiritual master has to say if you want to lose the taste right of material sense pleasure and if you want to follow spirituality yes bhokta ram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhrutam sarva bhutanam yatva mam shanti mrichati yes kirti mata ji hare krishna hare krishna mata ji the sages knowing me as the ultimate purpose of all sacrifices and austerities the supreme lord of all planets and demigods and the benefactor and well wisher of all living entities attain peace from the pangs of material miseries hari krishna. krishna so whoever is defeated by maya they are eager they they want to you know um, defeat the maya and they say i want to defeat the maya so what do they want they they are eager to get this peace of mind in this world that is why this shloka is called peace formula so this is the biggest formula of peace where lord krishna says bhoktaram yagya tapasam i am the supreme enjoyer of all the sacrifices and penances that you are doing whatever you are doing i am the bhokta bhoktaram yagya tapasam whatever tapasya whatever yagna you are doing i am the bhokta sarva loka maheshwaram the whole i am the supreme controller of or the proprietor of the whole lokas sarva loka all the lokas maheshwaram i am the supreme controller who can say with this kind of confidence tell me sukhrudam sarva bhutanam i am the best friend of all the living entities sarva bhutanam all the living entities sukhrudam real near your heart best friend yatva ma whoever gets this knowledge shanti mrichati he will get peace of mind so we should offer everything in the transcendental service of the lord this is the best shloka where lord is telling himself bhokta ram yagya tapasam i am the bhokta of all the yagyas and tapasam and then sarva loka maheshwaram i am the maheshwar of all the lokas so hurdam sarva bhutanam i am the best friend of all the living entities the moment you get this knowledge shanti mrichati so that we should offer everything up to the lord that means right because he is the master of all the worlds he all the deities reside in him all the devatas reside in him there is nobody who is greater than him he is sarvaloka maheshwaram so naturally and the path very much favorable for liberation is 
devotional service. The Lord is conquered by one who simply wants to love and serve him. Yes, correct. So this is the uh, peace formula. So we have to understand God the way he wants us to understand, not the way we want to understand him, right? So bhoktaram yajna tapasam, everything we have to do in his service, devotional service. And if you know God, the moment you know God, you will know peace. And if there is no God in your life, there is no peace in your life. <laughs> so we have to understand that, you know, we think that we are, we are the ones who are enjoying. We are the ones who are the controllers. We are Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. We think we are only control. Everything is my, my control. But, you know, if we start thinking that way, we are tied up in this cycle of birth and death. That's it. There will be action, then reaction. Action and reaction. So Sarva Loka Maheshwaram means what? No one is greater than Krishna. No one is greater than the Supreme Lord. He is the greatest. He is the supreme. He is the supreme proprietor of all the planets, all the devatas, right? So what is the takeaway? We are temporary owners. We have to remember that. And then, so Prudam Sarva Bhutanam. He is our best friend. He is the He is the well-wisher. He always wishes well for us. So if we can just, he has, he's extending his hand. The moment we, if we can just hold his hand, the moment we hold his hand, Krishna is our best friend. You can go sit in front of Krishna, talk to him, tell him everything. The moment you tell him from within, surrender mode, there is no way Krishna will not listen. And whatever is going to happen in your life, think that Krishna knows what your future is. You don't know. He is doing for your good, but you don't know what is good for you. Right? There is no one greater than Supreme Lord. So if everyone is Krishna's friend, then how can someone be our enemy? Everybody is Krishna's friend. All of our, all of us, Krishna's friend. So we are also everybody's friend. Okay. So chapter five memory, uh, summary: Sanyasa or Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga to Sanyasa we learned. Then we also learned about Nishkam Karma, free freedom from bondage, and then how to get liberation by focus focusing on the supreme personality of Godhead. So in the next chapter, what Lord Krishna is going to do is he is going to explain the process of eightfold yoga system, dhyana yoga, how to control our mind, how to control our senses by ashtanga yoga, all doing all eight kind of uh, yoga, which is called eightfold yoga system, dhyana yoga. So we will be learning about that tomorrow. Vancha kalpata rupyeshcha kripa sindhubhya evacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo nama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you for...